We've talked about birds a few times throughout this series of More or Less. We asked if the ambient avifauna, and yes, we are using long bird words now, the ambient avifauna is chirping louder than normal in lockdown. We also heard about some statistically savvy parrots. But now, it's time to unleash the pheasants. Because I like birds. Loyal listener Hugh Fernley Whittingstall wrote to more or less at bbc.co.uk with something on his mind. And if you're wondering whether that's THE Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, I think that will be clarified by the question itself. I've heard it said that at the beginning of the pheasant shooting season, the pheasant population has a bigger combined biomass than any native bird in the UK, and maybe as much as one-tenth of the country's whole bird biomass. Can you get a fix on these numbers? Well, I'm not a pheasant checker, I'm a pheasant checker's mate. The pheasant checker is Pat Thompson from the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, and he's been helping us look into this. At any moment in time during the summer, there are about four million pheasants that breed in Great Britain. So that's a lot of pheasants. Pheasants are a game bird, and they're reared in captivity for shooting. And the number of pheasants that are released into the British countryside for shooting is a staggering 47 million. Hugh suggested that possibly the biomass of pheasants was larger than the biomass of any other native bird. I thought that can't possibly be right, but actually from what you're saying, maybe it is right. Is it right? Depends at what time of the year you ask that question. We've got 4 million pheasants breeding, okay, and we've got lots of other birds breeding in the British countryside and so some scientists have actually gone out and estimated the populations of all these birds and then added a figure on for the number of young birds that each of these birds would produce during the breeding season and then given each of those a weight and added it all together and come up with an overall biomass or weight of all of the breeding birds in Britain and then they did exactly the same for pheasants and astonishingly they found that the pheasants made up about a quarter to a fifth of the total mass of breeding birds in the United Kingdom. Now that's breeding birds. Now remember, we also said they release 47 million birds and they did exactly the same exercise again. And when they repeated that exercise, they actually found that pheasants alone comprise one and a half to two times the total biomass of all of the birds, breeding birds, in the United Kingdom. It absolutely doesn't include farmland birds like chickens, guinea fowl, turkeys, ducks. It doesn't include that. We're talking about a comparison between a released game bird and native breeding birds. If you release 47 million pheasants, presumably you promptly shoot and eat many of them. How many get away and what impact do they have? I'm using data produced by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust. And in 2016, of that 47 million that were released, only 15 million were shot. So a third of them were shot. The other two thirds are therefore left out there in the countryside. A small number survive right the way through the winter to the next breeding season. But a huge number die of starvation, they die of disease, they're killed on the road, or they may be killed by predators, things like foxes. They're just not naturally well adapted to surviving in the UK countryside. We interviewed an academic, Amalia Bastos, who has been working with Kia, they're a New Zealand parrot, and they're really smart. They can do probabilistic reasoning, they're super smart. Pheasants do not have a reputation for being super smart. Is that unfair or are they stupid? And if they are stupid, why are they stupid? For sure, they do appear to have the tendency to gather in places where the, the risk of death is greatly increased. So any of your listeners that have gone through pheasant rearing areas will be aware in some of those areas that you just kind of note pheasants dead on the road. And perhaps some of those same people will also note that when they're going through some of these areas, they can see pheasants at the side of the road and they kind of slow down. But just as you're kind of going to go past the pheasant, it'll often make a kamikaze attempt at killing itself for some bizarre reason. So they, they have this knack of stepping out into the road when cars are coming and 
actually, it's really difficult avoiding them in some situations. So I am curious then if 30 or 35 million pheasants are escaping each year and it's all of a sudden, it's all happening during the hunting season in October, what impact does that have on the ecosystem? Is that a sort of bonanza because there's all these pheasants out there to eat or is it a disaster because the pheasants compete for food with other birds? That number of birds can have a really big impact both on vegetation and on invertebrates. And as you're rightly saying, they may be competing with other birds as well for some of the seed crops, for example. But then we believe that the overall number of these things, which are in the countryside, may be supporting predator populations, including birds of prey. Now, obviously, that could be a good thing. We've had a long-running problem with birds of prey. Actually, their populations aren't particularly healthy and they're recovering. But... As a consequence of that, birds of prey are therefore seen as being a bit of an enemy of the game producer. Not all of them, but some. And so in some situations, we actually experience illegal killing of birds of prey or disturbance of birds of prey in some of the areas where pheasants are being released. Pat Thompson of the RSPB.